do you believe current warfare can be regarded as a business for news? Unfortunately, I think there is certainly a lot of economic decisions. I think at times it brings money. Obviously, it costs money. And that may also be why news organizations are reducing because of the cost money. So I'm not saying it's just a commercial entity, but certainly there is a kind of political economy at work. How can, journalists, how can a journalist do his job with all the constraints that, uh, that occur in war? It's difficult, and that's why I'm calling for more cooperative, collaborative, sort of networked structures so that the, the burden and the responsibility can be borne by lots of news organizations um, and be done safely, but still manage to bring news to citizens, because I think we really need that news of, of war. Okay. Um, what is the role of citizen reporters in war? Do, they, do you believe they fill the gaps that can't be covered by journalists? I don't think journalists can really fill in the gaps. I think journalists should be involved, excuse me, citizens, should be, citizens, yeah. citizens should be involved, and they want to be involved, and I think there is a certain kind of information gathering that they could be involved in. So they can be helping to collect data, they can be identifying uh, photographs, identifying people, they can report on what they see. Um, I hope if they can do that safely. So I think there is a role, um, but I wouldn't call it filling in the gaps. I think what really is called for is a kind of networked approach rather than saying, well, journalists, professional journalists are going to sort of abandon this, and so let's get citizens to fill in the gap. I think that, that may be a problem, and again, a risk to citizens. But looking at this issue, but looking at this issue from a, a gatekeeper and a public audience point of view, do you believe that citizen journalism can have a credibility? I don't think that it generally has enjoyed credibility and a lot of times when someone is called a a blogger that's kind of a way of demeaning what that person does but I think there have been times when citizens have blogged or again gathered information that's been very very useful and very powerful so because it comes from the citizens own eyes and they are really bearing witness i think it can be again very powerful i i, I don't think that will replace what professional citizens excuse me what professional journalists do um but i think it definitely has a role and that we should acknowledge that role yes okay uh, i have one more question uh, do you believe that citizen journalism, due to its closeness to the actual facts, the actual events, can it be more truthful? Well, truthful is a very tricky word, um, but I think it can be very rich and very powerful. And so in some sense, yes, I think it can be truthful. Um, that's kind of small t, not, not big t. It's not some single objective truth. But then, of course, professional journalists make mistakes, too. So um, I don't think professional journalists have some monopoly on truth. And yeah, I think citizens can help us come to a deeper, richer understanding and contribute to truth. Okay, now, now the last question. Why don't communication school, uh, schools address this issue? Do you believe that uh, this could provide us, if schools, if colleges and universities that teach media studies, if they address this issue in a more accurate manner, do you believe that they would provide us with better and better equipped journalists? I think it's very complicated, and so I, I think that journalism schools need to lead the way in coming up with new understandings of what journalism can be, new definitions of journalism, new ways of doing journalism. And I actually do think that professional journalism schools, like here where I teach at the University of Maryland, um, could be more innovative in understanding how professional journalists of the kind that we train, that we prepare, that we educate, can partner with lots of other kinds of information gatherers. So I do think that that would be a better thing. I certainly don't want to put the blame on journalism schools for having failed to do that, but I do think they have a role, and they're beginning to acknowledge that role now. I have to ask you one last thing. Sure. 
Uh, because uh, this is a, this is a, personally, it's an important issue for me because whether we want to or not, we are witnessing uh, a, a, an increase in a participatory culture. How can schools, because they're formal, most of them are formal, the way they teach is formal. So once again, how can schools deal with this issue of participatory culture due to the, 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 due to the, the increasing of digital media and the use of digital media by everybody today? It's, horizontal, it's a horizontal issue. It's no more a vertical issue. It's a closeness issue. How can schools deal with this? I think one of the things that professional journalism schools and professional communication schools can understand and deal with the, the challenge that you're describing, and you're describing it very well, is to, to say, okay, it's not vertical, but that isn't to deny that different people can do things differently. So I think what, what journalism schools need to do is teach the specific skills that professionals can do um, not exclusively, not that they have a monopoly, but they have a special responsibility to be ethical and they have a special responsibility to provide interpretation and an analysis. So citizens are going to be providing a lot of on-the-ground information, but it's essentially undigested. It's raw information. And so what professional journalists can do is provide, again, analysis and putting it together and giving it context and giving it background and do it in an ethical way. So I think what journalism schools need to do is concentrate on the specific responsibilities that are not actually laid upon citizen journalists without denying what citizens can do and, and kind of leveraging the great things that come out of that demand for participation and for involvement and engagement, but still see professional journalists as having some distinct responsibilities. So the role of the gatekeeper is more important than ever? It is. Yes, it is. It is more important. Um, again, the, the boundaries are porous. It's not like some 14-foot uh, wall like we have here in this library that divides professionals and citizens. I, I, I think those walls are act and, or silos are problematic, but I, I do agree that professionals have a, a very distinct role in sort of analysis and, and gatekeeping and curating in the way that you're describing.